Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Still looking at the Junior CTF. Uh, the last video, last challenge I want to showcase was uh, OSSH. It was a 500-point uh, forensics challenge. Um, not too many people solved it if it still has 500 points uh, because they're dynamic scoring. Um, it says here, the young hacker Zora managed to connect to his neighbor's network after having looked around. Zora realized he was not the first hacker there. He found some somebody who was also slipping valuable information. Uh, helped Zora find out what information was stolen. So there's a dump file here, which is a PCAP file. So we can go ahead and download this, and I'll save it in... Uh, a specific folder for us called O underscore SSH. The name of the challenge here. I can save it and let's crank it out. If we get it over there, we'll take a look at this thing in Wireshark. And we see some connections here. Looking at a bunch of the data down, up, down below, I thought I saw some open SSH headers. I thought I saw, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Open SSH, open SSH responses here. So this looks like an SSH connection and then it's all encrypted so I can't see anything later. So it's very clearly an SSH connection. Um, oh, later on, we see some green, we see some HTTP. It's like going to a web page with the data. What do we have here? Follow TCP stream. Looks like, okay, we are using a wget agent, so just command line curling stuff for wgetting things from a simple HTTP Python server. And it's an HTML listing, a document directory listing. Oh, cool. We see some bash history, RC files, bash RC files, and profiles, SSH, SSH files. So maybe there's some private keys we can grab and some other, oh, even a password file, other stuff here. Can we, is any of that actually in here? It looks like they're, oh, I see a get robots.txt. Looks like they do get the bash history, a bunch of the profile script, and a bunch of other things. So at this point, I'm very curious what has actually all gotten here. So I go up to Wireshark and I export objects, the HTTP objects, and okay, cool, there is a bunch of stuff. So I want to go ahead and save this all, and I'll put it in that same folder that we have here. So I'll take a look at these things, and we've got a lot, right? So I'll check out the bash RC, I guess. One bash RC, and these one twos, etc., uh, show us that um, the the file has been separated into multiple files. It's been it's been segmented, so. I see a really valuable IDRSA, which is a, we know an SSH private key we can use. So I want to take a look at that ID underscore RSA, but it's cut off here. Since I know that, okay, there are some other files are there it's being split up into, we can just hopefully copy those and put them all together into one thing. ID RSA one, there's the rest of it here. And ID RSA two is the very end of it, right? Okay, so now this looks like more of a real full key here. So I'll just say this is private dot key. In case we, is hopefully with this we can SSH into something. Um. Oh, I probably want to make sure our VPN is is on and running. Let me do that. Ups. Online juniors. Team VPNs. Because we are going to want to try and connect to some of their IP addresses in this challenge. Open VPN. Okay, cool. Connected. Whoa, we're not connected. Device or resource busy? What the hell does that mean? Am I still already doing it? PS, PS Hawks, PGREP, OpenVPN. Okay, cool. So it's already running. Then we're good. Um, so if we have this SSH key, can we actually SSH into anything? Um, it looked like there were IP addresses that were 
already doing SSH in the packet capture. And that was uh, destination addresses 10.0.23.37 and 10.1.041. Um, so let's take a look at some of those. Are there any of these up? I immediately forget everything I just said because those are crazy numbers. 23.37. Seemingly down. Supposedly. I don't know. Not responding to pings. 0 0.41. I want to make sure... Okay, I want to make sure an open VPN is actually working for me, so I'm just going to... Make sure I'm connected. Okay, now I'm connected. Okay, sir. Okay, so I can ping that first one. I wanted to verify. And the second one I can't ping. There are other IP addresses in here. The actual uh, ones that were used for the get re requests. That looks off. That looks also off. So I'm curious about this first one, 10.0.23.37. Um, but I tried to SSH here to that one. And I didn't get anywhere. It looked like it had a connection timed out or connection refused thing. So back in the packet capture, I thought it was very peculiar. I go and take a look. How are they doing this SSH connection? Um, so I take a look at the destination port. Actually, you can see I have that added as a column in here. I thought that was very strange that it's not running on the usual SSH port of um, two two of twenty two. So they are specifying it on port three eight five seven four. And okay, permission denied. Public key. Okay, okay, that's an error message. That's an actual action actual result. I guess. What's it? It's probably trying my username, but John may not actually be a username over there. So now I need to know what username I'm trying to connect as or with. And I have a public key that I can, or a private key I can connect with, with, but now I just need to know what user. So I do a little bit more reconnaissance here. I have all these other files. And I'm curious what they all are. So I want to look at like bash history. I know I saw that. Um, it's probably hidden right now. Yeah, yeah, the dot bash history. Bash history. Oh, it looks like it has some results here. PWGen, I don't know. Profanity. I was curious what that thing is. So I actually, when I was going through this challenge, I actually went ahead and tried to, ins I installed Profanity and tried to connect with this, but it asked for a password and I don't know Stan's password. But I saw Stan at and I thought Stan might be a user. So I tried to connect with that. I saw him SSH into a host, my host name, my super pupper host or super pupper host. That obviously is not a real domain. I wasn't able to do anything with. Strings on random files that I don't have, other other things that I don't have. Odd that he was manning exif tool and man7z. I didn't find a use for those in the challenge. So, But I, I really did try to uh, use Stan, and I also saw this other IP address that I was curious. I uh, nmapped, and I searched for and pinged and tried to SSH to, but it didn't end up working for me. So... Uh, I tried Stan, but that didn't work. Um, so then another curious thing that I that I was interested in um, was that password file that I know that I saw in the listing and something that is, is actually here. We do have a password file. So I can cat password, and I look through here to see if there are any login shells that actually like work, and I notice that... The only thing that actually has been bash as a login shell is the Postgres, like, the Postgres SQL database user and manager, the administrator. So I was like, is that seriously what I'm supposed to log in with? I tried, and that didn't work. Oh, before I do this, I should actually make sure that I'm specifying my private key, the, the full thing. So you can use that with the dash I argument. Still, still wrong, right? Oh, and I have to make that, uh, change the permissions of this. So, I need to 600 private key. 
because you the error message here says that you want your private key not accessible by others, so you just change the permissions to it. Uh, 600, zero, uh, read and write, I think, and 00 zero so no one else, no group or no other or all users can actually access it. So I couldn't get the Postgres one to work, and it looked like that was the only user that actually had bin bash as a shell, and speech dispatcher had sh, but that didn't work. Um, so I studied this for a while and thought it was extremely curious that my etc. password file started with E <laughs> and uh, there was no root user or anything in here. Um, but it looked like this was all that I had of the password file. There was no password one or password two like I had seen for the other files, like IDRSA or bash RSC and stuff like that, and all the in this big Kuzin file that I, I was seeing later on. So I went back to the PCAP, and actually, I didn't. I I was still looking for the IP address, or I thought there would be a hidden IP address like an SSH and do before I found that destination port would actually work for me. So what I actually had done during when I actually was going through this challenge, I had looped through everything in the um, file here. I actually had a list.python file. I looped through all the packets <laughs> and I did this with Scapy. I just read the PCAP file and for every single thing, every single packet, I just had to display everything and then I would be able to try and like search and look through it. So that I put to a file, all.txt. So this had all the payloads and information and everything that was going through it. So what I did is I tried to search for that etc. password file. I just looked for Postgres to find that user. And there it is right there. And I notice, again, this starts with E. So this packet, I wonder if there are any others or anything else around it when I'm searching. And sure enough, I find other um, parts of the password file, like the etc. password file, just chilling out in other packets that it wasn't able to extract out or export in the objects when Wireshark tried to do it on its own. And it looks like it ends in bin false without the E, so I know, okay, this must be the continuation of the other one. So I start to piece these together. I replace all things, all the actual new lines with the real new line. And again, I'm just piecing these together, just like I had done with the ID, RSA, private key and stuff. And I scroll down. And it looks like there's a few more. There's a couple stragglers that I just copy in and, and take a look at. And there we go. We find an actual little interesting uh, uh, possibility or potential user that we could log in as. This Hirsch account that actually has a home directory and actually has a login -able, like a shell we can log into. It has been bash as its default shell. So is this the user that we're looking for? Let's try it. Change it to Postgres. And hey, cool. We got a connection, and this looks like our flag, right? That's awesome. Okay, so the flag is the third season was sold to the aliens or whatever. We can copy and paste that, and we get it. Um, so I did a lot more actual, like, thinking and hunting around and looking at all these files, what all these IIHTML and what the robots.txt and other things actually were, trying to recover the images and stuff. But the real meat and potatoes of when I was actually solving the challenge um, was, again, hunting for a different IP address, because I didn't know I could use this 1001 with that strange port. I thought it would just be on a regular SSH22 default port. So I thought there would be another IP address in there. And that's why I, I, I had done that... Uh, scapey scraping with all the packets. Like these are literally just all of the packets showing all of their fields. And that way I guess I can look through them a little bit more easily than trying to go back and forth and wire shark. So this is a nice tactic and scapey's kinda nice for that. Um and that way I was able to see I was able to see the things that uh export objects wasn't able to to scrape out. So that was really cool. And again, piecing together the private key, knowing that that ID RSA 1 and 2 are the continuations of the previous file, but it doesn't always work for all of the files, like the password one that we needed. So, 
Doing a little bit of a reconnaissance, looking around, exploring, hunting. We were able to find the user, the IP address, the port, and the private key, all to be able to make this SSH connection and get our flag. So that was really cool. Uh, that one was actually a good ch a ch good challenge. Again, on the technical level, but I felt like there was a lot of guessing. Um, but still very peculiar for us to know the destination port the SSH connection is making and really look for all the things that Wireshark may be overlooking or, or miss when it tries to export objects like that, 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 that password file. So, sweet! There we go. <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and all the others. Um, Junior CTF was really cool and really fun. Um, it was also an extreme pain and torture and stupid and dumb in all of the strange mistakes and guesses and Russian languages that it had used. But uh, I had a good time, and I think it was really cool for us to stay within the top 10 or so and fluctuate with the, the top of the scoreboard. Where am I at now? Still a 9. Okay, fluctuating back and forth with open to all. Um, again, only 9 hours until the end of the game, so hopefully, hopefully that stays. I'm just happy I beat our rival team. Oh, it looks like they're catching up, though, so cool. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching again, guys. Hope you like some of these CTF write-up videos, and I'll see you in a later video.